And we're live. Welcome to the seventh sprint of the Common Stacks new uh, Zen, from the Z Common Stacks Zen Hub Revolution. Uh, I'm Griff Green, and I'm gonna just uh, pass it straight to the team to tell you about all the awesome stuff that we did this in this last two weeks. So, Tammy, you want to take it away? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me just share my screen. So, as Griff just mentioned, uh, we are in Sprint 7 uh, for Common Stack, and our sprint goal is enabling common economies. So, you'll see uh, the rest of the team present a lot of stuff around that theme and other stuff too. Um, and uh, we are reversing the order. And so, our board is full this week. And right after this review, we'll do our retrospective and uh, clear this board. The other thing that I wanted to share, which I sneak previewed le last week, was our CS Love swag shop. And um, it is actually using the Origin protocol, which is a decentralized and open source e-commerce uh, platform. And uh, it is working and we've tested it and airdrops are imminent. So uh, as people join the Swiss Association, we will be airdropping them some CS Love. And I'll pass it to Livia. Thanks, Tom. Let me also share my screen. Um, so I'll give a few updates on the token engineering comments and all the progress we're making. Um, so we've been implementing Ostrom's principles in the TEC and governing the comments has been an awesome reading uh, to uh, bring all of those ideas that Ostrom has into our, our cultural build. And we are on the last week of the book. So we read six chapters so far, a lot of people engaged with us. So if you wanna check it out, this is the last chance. Next Tuesday at 8 p.m. CET, we're having the, the last call of Governing the Commons Book Club. And also I wanna talk about uh, gravity training. This is something amazing that has been happening. Um, it's an initiative led by Juan Carlos, who is the lead of the Gravity Working Group, that is uh, conflict management, anti-fragility, and uh, um, a, harmony, uh, a harmony space. How do we bring harmony to the TEC? How do we make sure that these communities are anti-fragile? And uh, he's been leading this, this training that had its second session yesterday, and it's amazing. A lot of people has been joining. It's one hour and a half long, and we've been having a lot of value from it. So um, in the end of each session, you can claim a POAP that will allow you to become a Graviton in the end of this training, and a Graviton will be a conflict manager uh, inside of the TEC organization and will also empower you to uh, facilitate conflict resolution in other organizations as well. And I also want to shout out to this amazing calendar. Like there are so many things happening in the in the TE space and in the TEC. So many of these uh, initiatives are uh, something you can learn from. And Jess will uh, touch point a little bit more on this and also Griff. So every Wednesday at uh, 4 p.m. CET, we'll have welcome parties to the TEC. So if you're curious to know what's happening, um, if you wanna ask questions, if you've been around, but you still have a, a lot to absorb because it's so much that has been happening, please uh, join us and I will pass to uh, Chris. Sure, so I don't have a whole lot uh, that I'm gonna show, but I will tell you guys all about what I've been working on uh, during this sprint. So uh, a lot of work on Discord servers, uh, both the TEC and the CS um, common stack servers are pretty much ready to launch. Uh, the TEC server has started to see a few different people uh, showing up to help kind of um, lay out the last bit of um, scaffolding for the server um, and kind of just help help the finish put the finishing touches on it um, but it is basically uh, ready to launch the common stack server is also pretty much ready to launch uh, there's just one more integration I'd like to do uh, with Zapier first um, but the uh, I'm planning to send out the um, 
an open invite to the community in our uh, upcoming newsletter, which I've been drafting this last week as well. Um, that should go out, uh, if not today, sometime uh, over the weekend or the latest will be Monday. Um, so yeah, I've been working on that as well. Um, the migration from MailChimp to HubSpot for our uh, community engagement and CRM uh, is on its way with uh, Dan. Dan and I have been doing a bit of work on that uh, this last week and a half, um, just kind of trying to put the final touches on what data we are pulling out of uh, MailChimp, um, how we're integrating it into HubSpot, how we can make it the most useful, um, and just kind of making sure that w when we move the data over, that uh, it's most useful us for us to engage with the community and really has uh, the final uh, benefit of better engagement with the community. So um, as I mentioned, Zapier integrations are being continually built out. We've got some Twitter forwarding um, actions happening in the common stack server. We've also got some uh, collab land integration to for the C stack tokens to have some token gated channels. Uh, we also have been working hard on the Discord praise bot, which is at, it's functional, uh, but it's only deployed on a local instance right now. So it's only uh, only available when our contributor has his laptop on. That is going to be changed very soon. Uh, he's just getting his, the instructions to help me uh, deploy it to our VPS, uh, and then it'll be on all the time, uh, and I'll have access to kind of the background configurations if anything needs to change. But we've been testing it. It's been pretty awesome. Um, basically, it, this bot will live in multiple Discord servers. We'll be able to um, differentiate praise from different servers, different channels, um, and it'll, it'll make it a lot easier for us to sort. Um, and, and it's quite simple uh, for uh, dishing praise as well. All you have to do is um, tag the people. There, there's no issues with commas or anything. Um, there's just a very short praise uh, command at the start. You just tag the people you want and then give a general reason. It's I think it's a lot less uh, prone to errors um, compared to the Telegram bot. So that'll be really nice. Should give us um, should make praise dishing a lot easier and should we should be able to. Uh, even add more of the community into dishing more praise. So looking forward to that. Um, we are also getting more active on Twitter, uh, sharing more of regular evergreen content, um, and that's going to continue ramping up uh, with Ivy's help. Uh, she's been stepping up and doing a lot more scheduling for us, which I'm very thankful for. Uh, thank you so much, Ivy. Um, the team section of the website is updated, almost complete. Um, I've, I've got a couple of minor uh, changes to still make with that. And then we're gonna start moving into the uh, larger, kind of integrating the larger feedback from the team uh, for larger website uh, refresh. Um, so if you keep an eye on the uh, commonstack.org website uh, over the next few weeks, you should start seeing changes um, and hopefully things will be more concise and clear and easy to read. Um, we also started up uh, Common Stack comms meetings uh, weekly. Uh, so if you're able to join us, they're, only, they're a couple hours after the uh, TEC comms meeting on Tuesdays. Um, so if you we'd like to integrate more of the community in, if, especially if you're interested in comms and have some skills in that area, join us on the CS comms meetings and we'll help you uh, get, get integrated and help you get contributing. Um, that's pretty much it for me for this sprint. Um, but yeah, I'll pass to Dan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Salud. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was somebody else's turn. Anyway, yeah, yeah that's super exciting. Um, I'm very glad that we've been collaborating a lot of this on this sprint. Like, uh, the, the things that may happen with Hotspot, I mean, migrating from Elsin to Hotspot is basically to serve you better, guys, like everybody collaborating. So who are the contributors? Who is interested in comms? Who is interested in, yeah, yeah. Just basically to sort everything out and be more active like, dynamic. So this month, January, we had 34 new applicants to the trust. That is, that is very exciting. Um, most of those emails have been sent. Uh, some will be in the in the next sprint, but that's super exciting. I want to give the two quick shouts to amazing committee members. Really, uh, let me get this. This is a little one. <laughs> anyway, um, 
we, we've been having sessions, uh, I think we mentioned this before, uh, for building with greater than. And case is one of our So I just wanted to give her a quick shout like, is ready, they're coming to. We had a donation from Christopher from Shirokov. If you are interested in the ecosystem value flows of food production, reach out to these guys. They're doing amazing things and they're very supportive and as community members are very active as well. Right now. Um, just as well, I wanted to show you guys, like I mentioned in the last spring, this logic of like, optalities for good, which is behavioral design model. So we have like, um, we have a workshop on this, uh, so thinking about the people that come into the trustee journey, and uh, well, that probably won't charge, but uh, that's basically, this is a worship to think about the steps of the journey, and this was with the team. Eventually, this kind of logic or dynamic, so understanding the best moments to hike certain contributor calls or having like a potential other aspects to the journey and the incentive, how we keep each other motivated and how we cross pollinate and how we facilitate this, this beautiful scene as you can say, all the members of the trusted scene, this is happening and this, this conversation are going to scale. So this was a, a fun workshop and that's, that's, that's it for me. I'll let it, I'll, I'll pass it to you, Jess. Thanks, Dan. Oh my God, wait. I oh, go some. for it. <laughs> yes, yes, I wanted to. <laughs> anyway, I want to announce that we will be having an MA. I, I, I love how, how Lydia shared her, her calendar. So, and this is not my, all my calendars, so many calendars. So anyway, anyhow, we will be having an <laughs> Ask Me Anything session. You may have heard about the common stat. Just uh, the Swiss membership uh, that that is coming. We will be having an Ask Me Anything session. This is 10 a.m. EST, which is sadly 7 a.m. PST, but it's 4 p.m. in Central Europe. So everybody will be invited. There are more details to come. This is in shape right now. But you really wanted to get it out there. So right now, yes. Go ahead, yes. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Dan. That was a big one. Okay. I am rolling in the comms area. So this week, um, it was uh, actually over the past few weeks, we've been in a process and looking at what is the common stack narrative and the TEC narrative. So I'm focused on the TEC side. So we've been going through some uh, creative processes, getting the juices flowing. We did this Miro board here, just revisiting, you know, the TEC kicked off about, well, We've been going a lot longer, but four months was kind of our official kickoff. So we're kind of revisiting, getting ready for the hatch. The energy is flowing, prepping for the hatch. So we're realigning around what is our mission and why are we here? And that, that, that's very different um, in the token engineering co um, comments from the comments stack. We're specifically focused on accelerating um, the token engineering field and TE public goods and open source um, so uh, we wrote this article uh, as a team towards robust and resilient economies and communities, why we need a token engineering commons. We have this kind of 90s throwback word map of why we're here. And then just looking at uh, revisiting our mission uh, and then about token engineering and what we're doing in this space and, and the ecosystem and why it's so important um, that we have robust engineering and how that's really important to uh, mature and take blockchain into kind of the next evolution. So really cool article. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, retweet, give it a few claps. That would be super appreciated. But um, also, you know, we spend so much time talking about um, the infrastructure, but always remembering and coming back to the, the why that we're here. And that's for this huge mission that brings us all together um, for this purpose and why our community has uh, so much great energy in it. And um, the other thing uh, that's really cool that happened this week for the Common Stack ecosystem, um, Z uh, Zargum is 
kind of spun up through what happened through the token engineering commons um, and some connections and, and weaving the threads and these different ecosystems is um, Tanner with Pictosis had submitted a proposal to token engineering commons that aligned very much with what um, Sargam has been envisioning for some time. So put those two together and this uh, whole collaboration research group emerged and had a lot of like energy and magnetism so much so that about 30 or 40 people showed up to the first call to kick it off. So it's, uh, we're calling it skills forest. Um, so like Owaki from Gitcoin was there and ceramic and all these really cool, uh, amazing humans that are building um, beautiful things uh, and they all came together to align around looking at the architecture and ontology for NFT systems and um, so it's recorded if you want to go and check out this call and as uh, YGG so eloquently stated in the description Master Zargum disseminates his benevolent vision of the skills forest to his army of web3 eons a summoning has begun so that pretty much describes that uh, and yeah there's just research collaborations, we're calling them co-labs, uh, popping up all over the ecosystem. There's one for looking at Gitcoin models. It's kind of like these, um, this meta layer um, in our ecosystem of all these amazing geniuses coming together, hacking on different things. So if you have an interest in NFTs, or if you're interested in um, hacking on some models, there's definitely a place for that. Just hit us up in the comments stack chat and we can point you in the right direction. Or of course, we're just blasting Twitter with all the amazing um, you know, courses and trainings and all of this incredible value that's coming through all of these collaborations. So that is really, really cool to see. Um, the other last two things to mention, um, have some really great uh, partnership calls uh, with a tech super cluster in Canada that um, is a fund and they're looking to maybe fund some use cases. So there might be something for somebody for you out there if you're uh if something pops up there and we've been having some great discussions with carbon base they're doing an nft project with um kind of like wild cards and uh, kind of like crypto kitties like with with rare crypto digital assets to represent endangered species and they have a a, a partnership with the world wildlife federation so they're doing some huge things through them in the nft research group and they also want to join the trusted seed so we have some great new members um, showing up and coming and joining us on our mission with the common stack also talking with dada and we have a call with disco coming up about the invisible economy and, and looking at you know some potential collaborations and submitting proposals to the token engineering commons and speaking of proposals we are still accepting proposals um, if you have a te project um, and you need some funding and you're building some open source um, education, tools, tech um, that the whole ecosystem can use, please uh, reach out. We would love to hear from you and get a proposal submitted to the Token Engineering Commons for when we hatch so you can get some funding for your project. And we are also accepting guest blog submissions um, for the TEC. So if you have a really cool thought leadership piece or you want to share about a project you're building, um, please feel free to reach out. And with that, I will pass it to Jeff. Nice, I lost my window, cool. Uh, okay, so I will share screen here. I cannot, oh yeah, I can just take over from you. Here we go. Cool. Um, so for this sprint, we had a lot of team conversations around um, common stack narrative. Um, I won't go into detail on this talk, but um, yeah, some of the um, different areas that we focus as an organization, curating the trusted seed, um, working as a collaborative research uh, and documentation group, also as a uh, smart contract and legal development group, um, also as a public, eco uh, public goods ecosystem funding group, and of course, working on collaborative ecosystem deployments like the TEC. Um, this will uh, be coming out as an article, hopefully in next sprint. Um, and actually that's most of the uh, stuff I'm gonna show now is upcoming content um, that will be coming out in the next couple of sprints. We chatted about the um, uh, common simulator in the past. Um, this is a really cool uh, gamified, basically CAD CAD front end. Uh, I've got a piece in the works um, coming out about that. Um, also, in the interest of showing um, fun diagrams, we've got a piece coming out on um, augmented bonding curves. 
Um, this is one of the fun causal loop diagrams that kind of shows the dynamics that put at play in the bonding curve, um, where we have this uh, funding pool that is kind of a, uh, asymmetric on the burn side. This is kind of the, the dynamic that is created to kind of produce this continuous funding uh, in augmented bonding curves. So really excited to uh, share some more of our, our research around that with the community. Um, also some, some thinking around kind of um, presenting different governance types as like logic gates. Um, this is something that uh, I've kind of been playing with and just wanted to share with the team and the community about thinking about like the different between difference between consent and consensus um, and trying to kind of map this to like governance circuits. Because um, I think this can help to explain the different kinds of polycentric governance tools in, in these various communities and how we can um, kind of build foundations for these kind of governance systems so that every community, every DAO doesn't have to, you know, create it from scratch. We can kind of have some, some shared standards or, um, or diagramming to explain how these various um, governance systems work. Um, another interesting piece that'll, that'll come out, I've been riffing on um, kind of this public goods, private goods matrix um, that's common in, in uh, commons parlance um, and fitting our ecosystem into, um, you know, what part of our system is a private good, a club good, a common good, a public good, um, and actually the, the interesting interplay between these forces, you know, in, in a commons, um, we will see kind of the interplay from private goods, which are the DAO tokens or TEC tokens in the TEC, for example, um, being uh, a claim on a club good, um, the tax going into a common good, the funding pool, and then the public good, of course, is the, the uh, output that's produced. So yeah, some, some interesting um, um, angles on the work that we're doing and uh, really excited to push some of those in upcoming comms pieces for uh, the next couple of sprints. Um, I think that was all I had uh, on this run. Yes, of course, we are doing some uh, um, website updates and um, the Swiss Association DAP is all coming along. Um, yeah, really exciting stuff there. Um, so I will pass on to Griff. I believe you're the last one. Perfect. Yeah, let's see if I can figure out the share screen too. Oh, yeah. So, uh, we on the on the TE side of things and the common stack side of things, we've made a lot of progress on you um, really fighting this uh, this tendency we have in the blockchain space to be sort of technocratic, where it's like who chose thirty two ether for for the 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 um, staking on Ethereum? I don't know, you know, and we don't even the the parameters of an economy are just chosen by the devs, and there isn't a lot of community input. So we're trying to change that. We're trying to uh, really enable commons economies to be designed by the commons uh, by the commons community themselves. And the TEC is our, our first opportunity to really uh, test this at the cultural build. And so we made a lot of progress in the last couple of weeks. We created a, a specification so that anyone can actually see what's being created. Uh, this is a forum post on the TEC forum, which is uh, is a lot of good information on the forum, where we basically just describe, okay, here is the Aragon DAO. And here are all the apps that are installed. And here are all the parameters that we use for our test hatch, right? So they're, they're kind of, they're not, this is not the final uh, uh, spec that you would expect to see, but it's a template where anyone can actually take it and make their own specification for a DAO that's similar to ours. Uh, and what we're going to do is uh, enable people to do that in a really cool way. Uh, YGG has come in strong uh, with help from Jake and me and a few other people to create a, a, a CAD CAD model that will actually allow people to uh, play with the parameters. So you can actually like see, I, I've never seen this before, uh, YGG created it, where it's like here's a graph that represents what it takes for a proposal to pass. The little blue triangle is the um, minimum quorum that's required. And then if there's enough, the bottom is the total number of votes, the, the x-axis and the y-axis is the number of yes votes. If, if the number of yes votes and the if you're in the green triangle, then the thing will pass. If you're in the red triangle, then it, will uh, then it will fail. But what's cool is you can, by just changing a knob, you can change the shape of this graph and, and understand in, in one graph, like what it takes to pass a proposal in a DAO. Uh, and there's a lot of other cool um, visualizations that we're creating 
to make it easy for non-technical people to actually understand what it means when they change these parameters. So this is a video from uh, one of YGG's workshops. There's a whole playlist that will be linked down below of all the cool um, um, labs that YGG has been pushing out. Uh, major praise to YGG on this. He's uh, really uh, just a force of nature in the token engineering space, and not just in the TEC, but in all sorts of projects. And so uh, once we have this, we're going to turn this into a website. So anyone can just go to the website and design their own hatch. And this will be great for the TEC to choose their own hash parameters. We have a way to vote with token log, uh, which maybe I'll show next time. But uh, it's really great for the common stack because once we've done it for the TEC, anyone can take what has been used and deploy their own commons economy. And their co community can actually decide their, uh, their own economic parameters. Uh, so yeah, your economy, your choice. That's, that's the meme we're going with. Um, also, uh, we made a lot of progress on the legal side of things. We actually kicked off the Common Stack Association. I showed the, um, the Swiss Association last time or a couple of times before. So I'm not gonna show it again today, but we had our first, the first legal members of the Swiss Association have made it. Uh, we have the top 10. So it's me, Chris, uh, Jeff, Jess, Olivia, I, I, uh, uh, Raf, our lawyer joined, which is always a good sign, um, Coach B, and uh, Zargum, but we did find a bug. Uh, anyone who signed up, uh, I, this is why we do user testing. Anyone who signed up, actually their name got deleted off the Giveth platform. So uh, your, your profile picture is there, all the information is there, but uh, go back and change your name if you guys can. Um, sorry about that, but this is why we do user testing. Uh, so we've already raised, uh, the Common Stack Swiss Association has almost raised $5,000, which is so cool. Uh, and, and it's just through user testing. And what will be really cool is uh, with the Give it Dapp, every uh, fee that every, uh, um, what do you call it? Membership fee that is collected, dues, membership dues. All the dues that are collected will be transparently allocated uh, and you will be actually able to trace exactly where your funds went. Uh, so you can see what your uh, contribution to the, to the trusted seed was actually spent on. It'll be super cool. And I'm excited to uh, show, show it off when, when we have some actual expenditures. Uh, we also had a big milestone for the common simulator. We made the, the community release. So we released it to the Telegram group. We're not quite ready for Twitter uh, and do the whole public release, but that, that's the goal for the next sprint, maybe next two sprints. Uh, right now we're doing more of that user testing and getting feedback, so please don't be shy. Uh, if you uh, saw it in our Telegram channel, you can go to sim.commonstack.org and uh, play our common simulator, a sneak peek. And at the end, there's a link to, the, um, to this GitHub repo where you can make an issue and tell us about how we can improve it. Uh, we just want to do that one last round before we release it. And uh, we have an amazing team, community-led team that is, uh, that is killing it. So um, yeah, that should be released soon. And uh, that's our sprint. So thank you guys for joining us and uh, watching our uh, watching all the progress that we had this week or this sprint. And hopefully we'll see you in two weeks uh, and to see what we come up with next. Thank you guys.